In the third example, I'm going to show you how you can avoid using Excel 365's unique function and instead use Excel standard formulas. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to work out the unique values of this table consisting of sales country and sales value. And we want to put the unique values in column G and then from the unique values work out what the sales are. So this has been, the source data has been set up as a table and it's called my table 2. So what we want to do first, and we're going to set up a new column here called unique number. So what we want to do is we want to find out the first instance of the duplicate. So Sweden, for example, the first instance of Sweden occurs in column row 2, sorry, and in terms of the table, it's in row 1. And then what we want to do is we want to show where those first instances occur. So what we do first, we type this formula equals count if. And then for the range, we select B2 and then B2 again. And we want to lock the first B2, press F4. And then for the criteria, we're going to be looking for B2 again. So what this doing is, when you copy this formula down, we're going to expand the range it's going to be looking at so it's going to be from b2 and then for each row where you copy the form down the the range expands and then we're going to be looking at the the current row uh where the formula is at and then we're going to be looking at column b and we want to see if the first instance instance is a one so if there's more than one instance it'll be like two three four we're not interested in those we want to see uh, where the ones occur so what we first do is we click on the arrow here and then as you can see the first instance uh, of each value is shown so you got sweden occurs once and that's the first instance singapore that's the first instance and if you look at sweden again sweden occurs again in row 10 so that's the second instance and usa the first instance is in row six the second instance is in row 9 and the third instance is in row 14. So what we want to do is we, we're going to ignore all the 2s and the 3s and the 4s. We just want the 1s. So we wrap it around in the formula and we're going to say if that equals 1, then we just want to put 1 for now. Else we want to put nothing. So now what's happened is the only the first instance of the duplicates are being highlighted. So now that we know where the first instance of each duplicate value occurs in the list for column B in the sales country, we want to put it into sequence. So rather than have just ones, we want it in one, two, three, and four, so we can then refer to it in the next stage of the formulas. So what we do now is we expand the if formula, and so this time instead of putting one. What we want to do is we want to put a max formula and then we want to find out what the max is for the rows above the rows above the current cell where the formula sits and then we want to add one to it. So we want to put D1, D1 and then we want to put add a one and we want to lock the first cell in that range so we want to put f4 and then so what basically that's doing is is working out if there's a a first value of an instance and so what it's going to do is it's going to add up all the find the max of the all the ones above it and then add one to it so that'll be the next number in the sequence and if there's no first instance we just want to put nothing and press return so when you do that Excel automatically for the table spills the formula down. So as you can see, you where you got the unique values first instance occurring, rather than having just ones and ones and ones and ones going all down, you now got in sequence ones and thirty, and then that's going to help us in the next stage of the formula when we use index and match. Okay, so so far so good. So what we need to do next is we need to convert these unique sequence numbers into the sales country. So in order to do that, we need to know what the index position is, the relative position is of each of these numbers in relation to the other numbers in the table for this column. And 
the function that's going to help you do that is the match function. So we type the match function, we're going to be returning the sales country in column G in relation to the unique instance numbers from 1 to 13. So we type the match function in column G and the lookup value is going to be the lookup value we've already put in place from 1 to 13 and that starts from select 2 and we'll lock the column F with the dollar sign, press F4 and leave the rows relative and the lookup array is going to be not just the my table 2 but we need to look at a particular column within the my table 2 so we still type my table 2 pick it up from the list then you press the square bracket the opening square bracket and that gives you a list of all the fields in the table and we want to find the relative position of each of the numbers in the unique number column so we select that after pressing the opening square brackets and then close the square brackets the third argument is we want an exact match, so that's zero. And then accept the formula and copy the formula down. So that's giving you the relative position of each of these instance numbers in relation to the other numbers in the column. And for for the tables, for the rows in the table, the first row is the the first row. The first row in itself for the table is a head row that's ignored if you like that could be classed as row zero but for the table the first row is going to be classed as the first row so for example if you go for uh, sequence number nine that's showing that's in position 12 so if i just highlight these sales numbers going all the way down to nine we see there's a total of 12 numbers there so that's showing 12 position for the unique number instance of 9 so that's working correctly we also notice that there's an error here and the error is because uh, sequence number 13 doesn't exist i've done that deliberately because so then it can it can work out the sequence number of any new countries unique countries appearing so that would be unique sequence number 13 so to get rid of that you can wrap the match formula using the if error formula so the value of this an error is what we're going to do is if there is an error we just want to put nothing so by copying that formula down with the if error it get, that gets rid of the not applicable error great so now that we know what the relative position is of each of the sequence numbers in relation to the other sequence numbers in the unique number column we can now use the index formula to translate map the unique numbers into sales country. So we type index formula in front of the match formula and just put some spaces for the arguments of the index formula. So the array is going to be again it's going to be my table two. And but specifically we're looking at the sales country. So open up the square brackets and it comes up with a list of all the, the fields for the table so we want the first one sales country and then close it with the square brackets and then the row number is going to be handled by the value of the match formula result so bring that in and the third argument is for the index we're going to be just looking at the first column which is the sales country so we can either leave that blank or just to help you understanding for one for column number one and then finish off the index formula and as you can see for the instance one it's translated the instance one the unique number one into the country sales country so we copy all the way down so for each of the instance numbers the unique numbers you've now translated it into the sales country using combination of the match formula and index now the last sequence number 13 doesn't exist i've done it this way so that if a new country appears on the list it's ready to convert that instance number if it's a unique number 13th sequence number into a country so let's put a new country in here that's occurring for the first time in this list let's say it's portugal and as you can see it's already picked it up here 
So it's this 13 sequence number and it's picked up in the cell country column D using the index and match formula. And then let's just put for the cell value, it's the same as before, as per USA. Great. Um, then what you can also do is you can wrap that round in if error formula as we did before. So if there's any sequence numbers that don't exist yet, then we can make sure rather than put error, we can put nothing, quotes, double quotes, and that will make sure uh, the error is not shown and nothing is shown instead. The final stage of this task is to work out what the total sales are for each of these unique sales countries. And we're going to use the sum ifs formula, the one with the S. So we type sum ifs in column H, and the sum range is going to be again my table 2. This time the sum range is going to be the sales column. So we're going to choose sales square brackets and close it to square brackets. And then the criteria range is going to be the sales country. So again, we use my table two. And the criteria range is going to be the sales country. And then the criteria is going to be the country. That's going to be handled by the values in column G. So choose column G, G2, and it's going to start from G2, and we're going to lock column G, and the row is relative, and then accept that formula, and copy all the way down, and there you have it, you now have got a unique list of countries for each of the instance numbers and the total sales. Thanks for watching, and watch out for my next video.